So great to talk to you both. Congratulations on a great movie. Thank, Thank you. you. I guess I want to start with this because I'm such a massive pro wrestling fan. So when I found out this movie was coming, I was very excited about it. But I wanted to ask the two of you, did y'all have any preconceived notions of pro wrestling and what it was and what it represented? And did those ideas change after going through this process of the movie? Mauro, we can start with you. I did have preconceived notions because I thought it was all fake. I didn't watch wrestling. I would watch Hulk Hogan with my little brother. It's not something that I experienced. But I did think it was all fake. And then doing the movie, I realized, you know, there's a tremendous amount of training they have to go through and a tremendous amount of athleticism. I didn't, I didn't know how physically demanding it was. I thought it was just a show. And there's a lot more to it than that, I think. Yeah, yeah I'm going to... I'm going to second uh, Maura's answer too. You know, uh, I was a I was a combat sports fan, and um, you know, but 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 my interest previously had been more boxing and MMA, and not that I wasn't a, a wrestling fan, but I had trained in the other sports and I hadn't trained as a wrestler. So the first thing I did when I got the part was you know just go to wrestling school. You know, and uh, what I discovered almost immediately. Um, was how difficult it is, uh, the tremendous athleticism that's required, the technique that's required, the endurance that's required. And I came away with a profound uh, respect and admiration, uh, you know, for the guys who do this professionally, because it's not easy. You got to have all those things that I just described. And then on top of that, you got to have the personality and the charisma and the imagination to be able to create a character, you know, that's going to connect, you know, with the wrestling fans. So because if you don't have any of those uh, qualities, if you're missing even one of them, you're not going to become a, a, a star. In, in, in the world of professional wrestling. And uh, so, so it was a real, you know, education for me in, 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 in that respect. And, um, you know, uh, uh, it, it, to be very honest, it kind of made me a wrestling fan for life. Okay, well, hey, we, we can always use more of them. At, at, you know, we can always use more wrestling fans. But, but more, you know, I, I, look, I'm from Texas, the Von Erichs. That story is, is, you know, you're born and bred with it here, especially if you're a wrestling fan. But as much as I knew about the Von Erichs, I didn't know a lot about Doris. I didn't know a lot about her at all. And watching the movie I, afterward, I felt like I wanted to see a whole story just about her and her right. life and her character. <laughs> what, what is your idea of who she was as a person? Kind of what's your assessment of her? I mean, it's it, there's not a lot of... I tried to do the research too, but she's just not in these documentaries. Like, you know, it's she was a part of the... She was a little bit more a part of the show in real life than she was depicted in the movie. But it wasn't a whole lot to go on, um, except for her, everybody just talked about her faith. Um, and that's, I guess, the, the, the thing that I leaned on, which was how does this woman, this very uh, stoic, uh, how does she handle all of this pain and all of this loss? And it was her faith. So I, that's, you know, primarily what everybody says about her was, was her love of God and the church. And then Holt, when you think about Fritz von Erich, I mean, again, I, I, I'm aware of him as a, as a character and, and knowing what I've seen in this movie and documentaries before, you have a sense of who he might be. But in your opinion, uh, do you feel like Fritz von Erich loved being a father or do you feel like Fritz loved having sons in order to have them reach a goal that perhaps he couldn't? Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, th th this question. is, of course, the 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 eternal question, uh, you know, about about this particular guy. Um, you know, uh, uh, y you'll hear people you know, say very negative things about about Fritz that that he was controlling, even that he exploited family tragedies for his own commercial gain. You know that he pushed his sons so hard that you know that he's in some way you know responsible. Do you know what I mean for the for the tragedies for the drug abuse? I don't buy that argument. You know um, there were there 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 was rampant drug abuse. You know in professional wrestling and in other.
other other businesses too in the 1980s. You know what I mean? There was a cocaine epidemic. You know that you can't blame that on Fritz von Erich. Hmm. Fritz was born in the 20s. Fritz never did cocaine in his life. You know, um, you know, you know. Fritz wanted his sons uh, uh, to to lift weights. He wanted them to be in shape because he knew that that strength and that athleticism was something that was going to be required if they were going to be stars in in, in in the sport. But I think that. I think that he loved his sons and he loved his wife and he wanted his family to be as successful as it could possibly be. Uh, I think he's a legend. I think he's one of the most interesting characters in the history of professional wrestling. I think he created a dynasty in Texas and and the 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 the, the, the real tragedy, you know, I mean, look, there there was a lot of tragedy, but but part of it is that that dynasty was so short-lived. That moment in time in the 1980s when David and Kevin and Kerry were rock stars, you know, who, who, could, who could fill Texas Stadium. It was a brief moment. And it was over almost uh, before it began. And, uh, and so, and, and so it's, it's, it's very sad. You know, um, but there was a lot of, you're a wrestling fan, so you'll understand what I say when I say there was a lot of tragedy that befell wrestlers in world-class championship wrestling. Gino Hernandez, Hernandez died, yeah. right? You know, we, you know, he was a, he had a terrible drug problem. Uh, you know, Chris Adams died. You know what I mean? A very Brody. violent death. Bruiser Brody, you know, was, 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 was stabbed to death in San Juan by, by Jose Gonzalez. Are you gonna blame all that on Fritz von Erich? Mm -hmm. I mean, at what point are we going to stop trying to suggest that everything that was wrong with professional wrestling in the 1980s was Fritz's fault? I, I just, I just don't buy it. I mean, yeah, you know, you know, uh, yes, he was controlling, and 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 yes, you know, he he. He motivated his, his 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 sons, you know, you know, to try, you know, to be to become to become champions. And maybe he did push too hard sometimes. But you know, um, I'd rather I'd rather have a father like that than a father who didn't care. Well, a pro profound answer and a profound movie. I want to be respectful of your time. Thank you so 